A year ago, I did a review of the Bose Smart Soundbar 600, and after trying out several soundbars, nominated it as the best soundbar of 2022. Well, here we are a year later, and I'm going to take that back. While it was the best sounding soundbar to my ears at the time, about six months into ownership, the soundbar began having problems all over the place, from not connecting to the app, to randomly not outputting any audio, to weird power problems that would lead to the soundbar randomly turning on when it was off. It was clear that the long-term reliability didn't meet the audio performance expectations. The search began again, and after demoing a few more options, I ended up with the JBL Bar 500. Let's talk specs and features, do an audio demonstration, and talk about why I think it might be a good choice for you. Full transparency, this is not a sponsored video. I 100% paid for this out of my own pockets. So if you find this video helpful, I'd super appreciate you using my link in the description to support the channel so I can afford more things to review. The JBL Bar 500 is a 5.1 channel soundbar with multi-beam and Dolby Atmos built in. If you're not familiar with multi-beam, it basically takes a non-Atmos signal and upmixes it to a multi-channel experience so you're still getting some nice surround sound. Looking at build quality, it's mostly made of a hard plastic matte body with what I believe is an aluminum grill that wraps around the front. On the top, you've got two small holes for the microphone, since it can be voice controlled and is compatible with Alexa and Google Home, and three buttons on the right side, a volume down button, a volume up button, and an input source selector. On the front right side of the grill, you'll find a built-in display that shows things like what input you have selected and what volume level you're at. Looking at the back connections from left to right, we've got your AC power connection, a USB port, an Ethernet port, though I think most will connect via Wi-Fi, an HDMI input which supports 4K, HDR10, and Dolby Vision, an HDMI eARC port which should be all you need as long as your TV has multiple HDMI connections for your devices, an optical port for audio, and just keep in mind that optical ports cannot transmit Dolby Atmos signals. If you're a gamer, the HDMI input is not HDMI 2.1, so if you want to take advantage of 4K at 120Hz, you'll want to connect your console to your compatible TV and then use eARC for audio to the soundbar. It's built with a total of seven speakers built into the bar. You've got three tweeters, one in the middle to help with dialogue, and two on each end to help with surround sound dispersion. You've then got four additional speakers in the middle, two on each side of the center tweeter aimed directly at you, which when combined with the built-in pure voice technology, makes dialogue super easy to understand, while those outward-facing tweeters do a great job at making the surround sound immersive. The bar measures in at 40 inches wide, about 4 inches of depth, sits about 2.2 inches high, and weighs in just over 6 pounds. But that's not all. One of the biggest changes coming from the Bose 600 is the included 10-inch sub, which is a monster of a sub for a soundbar and measures in at 12 inches width by 12 inches depth with a height just over 17 inches and weighs in at 22 pounds. Now back when I chose the Bose 600, I was comparing it to the JBL Bar 300, and neither of those came with a subwoofer, and while I preferred the Bose over the Bar 300, when you let the Bar 500 into the mix, there's no contest. Even when you compare the Bose 600 to the Bar 500 without the sub, you'll find you get a much more immersive sound with JBL. Not only is the direct sound and dialogue much sharper, but the left and right tweeters do a terrific job with the left and right signals. It's really not something you'd know you're missing unless your ears were already tuned to the Bose 600 like mine were. But once you add in that sub, it really takes the experience to another level and helps deliver a total peak output power of 590 watts. And while it can be overpowering if you dial it in too much, I find that keeping it at the lowest setting on level 1 provides plenty of bass to complement the bar. Just like in my car, I have the power to really let my bass boom and rattle my windows, but I like to start at 0 dB and slowly turn up the bass until it complements the music instead of taking it over. It's the same here, and honestly, if you're in an apartment like me, you're probably going to want to keep it at 1 anyway, as though it can go up to 5, any more might lead to some angry neighbors.
I bought this soundbar for our master bedroom, which measures 14 feet by 16, and it's more than enough to fill the room. In fact, I never go over 12 on the volume meter, even though it can go up to 32. If you're in an apartment, it should be perfect, and unless you're wealthy with a giant-sized living room the average person doesn't have, it should fill any space in your home just fine. A bonus with the sub being that it is kind of a tank is it's wireless, so as long as you can reach an outlet, you can place it anywhere you want, as the bar is both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi compatible. This means you can connect the JBL One app, and if you prefer not to use the physical remote, dial in EQ settings, adjust audio sync if there's a delay, do a calibration, and even use your phone as a remote control. Speaking of that calibration, that has to be one of the best features, as all you need to do is hit calibrate, and the soundbar will measure your room acoustics and automatically set it to the best configuration possible based on your environment. No need for extensive audio knowledge or wondering if it can be tuned to sound better, let the bar do the work. One downside I found with the app is if you're a heavy music listener who likes to stream from your phone, the built-in in-app music function only supports a small selection of streaming services, and whether it's because of some contractual obligation, does not feature Spotify, which is one of the biggest platforms and happens to be the one I use. That said, you don't have to use the app and can just stream directly from your phone via Bluetooth, which I prefer anyway, and while I can't demo any parts of a movie due to copyright reasons, I'll at least play back some music from the Soundstripe app to help give you an impression. After all that, would I recommend it? Well, I bought it, so if I felt it was worth my hard-earned money, I'm confident recommending it to you, and while it does retail for $599, at the time of this video, it's even cheaper than the Bose 600 sale price of $449 for only $379. That is a steal, and I wish I would have paid that, but even at the regular price, it was worth it. I'm a happy owner, and after three months of ownership, I've had zero problems and nothing to complain about. The fact you can get a nice quality soundbar with a booming sub for under $400 is exactly why I'm naming this video the best soundbar of 2023, we'll even say 2024 for now, under $400. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and feel free to ask any questions you might have. YouTube doesn't always notify me when someone comments, but I'll do my best to respond to anything I see. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell, and let me know if there's something out there you'd like me to review. Well, that's going to wrap things up for today. Until next time, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and have a great rest of your day.